All right, what's up, Tim Sykes here. Um, crazy day for me, uh, plus roughly $7,000, which is obviously very good, but at the same time, I had my worst loss in months uh, this morning, over four grand on AMBO, got a little too aggressive. The good news is I came back from it. The good news is this is why you have to expect the worst on every trade. That way you're never really disappointed. Too many people expect profits, they expect that the market owes them. The market doesn't owe you crap. You can get crushed in a heartbeat when you're trading these stocks that are up. I think at the time it was up like 192%. So I'm trading these big percent winners, but they can change very quickly. And AMBO, like it was very strange. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, spiking nicely. I'm buying it off a dip, just following, you know, my, my simple pattern. Um, and for whatever reason, big crash halt came back up. I mean, it actually bounced quite nicely all the way up to the sixes. So take away this crash and this halt, um, you know, in this little drop here. I mean, this probably would have been a profitable trade. A lot of people said, what happened here? I don't care. I don't care why it dropped. I don't care why it got halted. I simply react. Okay. Crazy stuff happens. And that is why, frankly, I took it and I moved on. In my very next trade, I made, um, you know, a few thousand dollars uh, on, well, these are out of order, but uh, on the next few trades, I made several thousand dollars. SUNW, former runner, spiking back um, up 37%. I mean, I was on one of these breakouts. I think it was on one of the dip, dip buys right here on this breakout and then the dip. I don't necessarily chase these choppy stocks, but I don't mind buying the dip. Um, I'm very excited actually for Friday. I'm going to find a link. One sec. I'm going to link this. Um, this is Friday and, uh, you know, I'm doing another all day live webinar. So I'll post the link if you want to join me. Um, the last two live webinars, I've had 20% winners on each of them, RVVTF and then VMNT. VMNT was an intraday trade. RVVTF was an overnight trade. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen Friday, but look at what I look like. Look at my crazy hair right now. Um, it's even longer. I took this video a few days ago. Now I look even more like a Chia Pet because I just keep growing it and I keep growing my account and I have no time to get a haircut. And now I want to donate it. And apparently to donate it, you need like eight or 10 inches. So I have a ways to go and we'll see how funny it looks in a few days. Leave a comment underneath this video though, if you're going to join me um, on Friday for the all day live training. Um, it'll be 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, and when you join my Market Mastery, you don't just get one day, you also get 11 other sessions. We do this once a month, um, and I really think it's a good way to learn because it's good for me to, you know, recap these trades. Um, but at the same time, like if you actually saw it, I kind of wish, like, you know, it would have been awesome if I had had this $4,000 loss today. Um, yeah, you know, if you had joined me today live, but we'll see. I'm not saying I'm going to have another $4,000 loss on Friday, but again, this was something I could not control. Um, this happens with the market. This happens with crazy stocks. It's funny, like my haters were jumping at me being like, Sykes just blew up. I had a lousy 2,000 shares. I lost four grand. It sucked. But this can happen. This can happen on any single play that you trade, whether they do an offering, whether it crashes out of the blue like this. And, you know, again, without this crash and halt, I really think I would have been right as it did make new highs even after it got down here. I mean, it was just a, a very strange phenomenon. But you don't hear me crying about it. You don't hear me getting angry about it. Um, too many people do. Too many people are like lose their, their minds just from their losses. I got right back on the horse. Um, I started trading uh, some other low price plays, CLIS, DSGT. Uh, none of them were really spiking that much. Um, so I moved on to more uh, battery plays, which was ABML. Um, and then the energy plays, you know, PECK and SUNW, which were runners from last week. So when you fall off the horse, you get right back on it. The $4,000 loss sucked, but at the same time, I controlled it. Um, as it turns out, I mean, I didn't have to take the loss if I had just held it. You know, it wouldn't have even been a loss, but I don't think like that, right? Like so many people think like, oh, how can I make the most money on this trade? And you break your rules or you don't employ any rules. And then you wonder why maybe this trade you get fortunate on, you get lucky and you're profitable. But then five trades, 10 trades, 20 trades from now, your process is all screwed up because you don't respect the rules. So even though I took literally the worst case scenario here on this $4,000 loss, I respected my rules. I cut losses quickly. I didn't complain. I didn't question it. I got right back into other trades. 
how many trades did I do today? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I have an overnight trade on LIACF, which looks pretty good too. Um, none of these trades even specifically matter, just that I'm trading, you know, the battery hype because today, frankly, PLL signed a five-year deal with Tesla. So this stock was up 226% for their lithium batteries. That spikes all lithium plates. That's why I am long LIACF overnight. Uh, this is another lithium company and it's a former runner. So if you start seeing news like that, like where Tesla signs a five-year deal with a lithium battery play, maybe not trade PLL specifically because that's now like a $20, $30 stock, but look for other lithium plays. And LIACF, if you remember back in July, went from 76 cents all the way up to 220 in three or four days. So it has a history of tripling. Today, first green day. Um, and it might not be the biggest percent gainer. I mean, it only finished up 30%, but ABML, you could also be long. This is another battery play. And I was buying this a few times. I actually took a loss midday because I just wasn't sure how strong it would close, but sure enough, it closed right at its high. So I actually underestimated that too. So when you look at my 7K day today, don't say, wow, what a great trader. Say there are so many opportunities and Tim Sykes is following his rules, whether it's, you know, usually preventing big losses, but in this case, creating a big loss when there was one. But I don't regret that at all. I'm getting this question on Twitter. I'm getting this question in so many messages. Do I regret taking the loss here? And the answer is no. Even though I was wrong to take the loss, even though the stock bounced right back up, I stuck to my rules. And that is what trading is all about. And that's frankly how I came back from it. Um, I was pumped when I had, you know, basically wiped it away with the SUNW trade and I was up like 300 on the day. Um, and then I was trading ABML that put me up like four grand. Then I was trading PEC that put me up like five grand. Then ABML again that put me up seven grand. So it was step by step sucking up the loss, sticking to my rules, and then trading other battery plays, other better plays. And it's like it didn't even happen except that, you know, now my haters look foolish because they're. They're trying to say that I blew up and instead I came back and had a great day. So never regret any uh, loss caused by sticking to the rules. Regret losses when you don't stick to the rules, right? Like if this didn't crash in this way, let's say it had just been an all day fader and then I cut losses at the end of the day and it was 4,000, that would be a bad loss. You cannot judge a loss just by the dollar amount and you cannot judge a gain just by the dollar amount. A lot of newbies say, oh, I made money, good trade. I lost money, bad trade. No, it doesn't work that way. I did the best I could. I saw the stock tanking. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if they were doing an offering at like a buck 50. I didn't know if the FBI was raiding their offices because I'm always expecting the worst. And I know that's a cynical way of looking at these things. But because of that, I just say, hey, I'm out. You know, I said, AMBO, big drop, I'm out, cutting losses. It was a very simple decision. It really wasn't difficult. It was almost mechanical. And I want you guys to get into the habit of mechanically taking losses like this. Um, you know, I, I don't want you to lose, but at the same time, I want you to have the right mindset. When a stock doesn't do what you want, um, whether it's a $400 loss or a $4,000 loss, it's not just about the dollar amount, it's that price action. The stock was not bouncing. If I could have cut losses quicker, I would have, but it dropped all in like 10 or 20 seconds. Um, I know a lot of people who are, would be in this kind of position, they would be like a deer in headlights. They wouldn't know what to do. Um, and again, in this case, you know, you didn't have to cut losses. If you did nothing and you held it through the halt, I wouldn't have a loss at all. But at the same time, I am proud that I wasn't a deer in headlights. I'm proud that I reacted and I followed my rules. Um, and as I said, by day's end, you know, this loss was just a memory. And now I have several other trades. Um, behind it. And now I, I think, you know, I probably should be long AMBL too overnight. Um, but this one just traded weird all day. So I don't really regret that. LIACF, much less risk. Uh, first green day overnight play with a former runner um, in, in the lithium sector. So I'm comfortable with my overnight trade. I'm comfortable with my daily trades and I'm seven grand richer. So lots of lessons. Uh, click the link below. Again, if you want to join me on Friday, for my all day live webinar. I might even show you my hair. I might do something crazy. I don't know, but I want to show you everything. I want to show you the process behind losing four grand, the process behind making seven grand or, you know, big or small. And I know there's a lot of students who had amazing days today. I'm sorry. I got to get going. 
I'm going to go cliff jump, cliff jump and cliff dive off like a two foot, like little Jew pedestal specifically made for like infants and, and me. And then everyone else in my group will do the, the higher pedestal and I'll just video them and I'll be like, don't take excessive risks. And I want you to remember that too. Bye. See you in chat tomorrow.